Testament, go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. There's a verse in here that's always kind of, I, I don't know, it made me chuckle, snicker a little bit. Uh, just because the, I, I think the Bible brings um, uh, sometimes level, levity, levity to situations. Uh, or um, if you read the Bible and you read it with your mind active, there's humor in the Bible. Oh, there's all kinds of humor in the Bible where you're like, you know what? God does have a sense of humor. Uh, you know that part he said, love your enemies? That's so funny. No, I, uh, uh, in this portion of scripture, I, I think you'll find what I find uh, sort, of, sort of funny or at least amusing. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse number, we'll start in verse number 16 and read through the end of the chapter. The Bible says in verse 16, you know what? Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this morning's uh, message. Um, Lord, sometimes we hear messages that are so often spoken on forgiveness and we're given, uh, you know, the psychology of forgiveness. And of course, the command as always, but uh, Lord, we are with preachers nowadays and, and, and so very many of them being ear ticklers rather than preachers. Uh, Lord, we need rebuke from the word sometimes. We need, we need to be straightened up and, and hollered at and and, and, and gripped with a loud voice and a firm hand through preaching sometimes. And, uh, but it's not because the preacher's angry. I believe it's because he is passionate about knowing the Bible and knowing the end of bitterness and warning people. Oh, Lord, bitterness is such a, and unforgiveness is such a dangerous, dangerous poison. Oh, Lord, I'd ask that you'd help if anybody was sitting in the morning service this morning and they didn't, they didn't listen or they didn't heed it. And Lord, I'd ask that you'd continue to be patient with them. Remember that they're dust, but Lord, help them to get right before it's too late. Lord, I, I look forward to seeing you, but Lord, I'd ask that you'd continue to bless our church in the meantime. Help us in all that we're trying to do for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse number 16, the Bible says, uh, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not uh, hmm, yes, mind not uh, high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense or repay to no man evil for evil. Uh, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now that's the verse that I kind of he says, he doesn't say live peaceably with it, all men. He says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you. You know, sometimes we say, I am at my wit's end with you. You're really just basically quoting scripture saying, as much as has lied in me or lieth in me, I've had it up to here with you. So live peaceably with all men. Verse, eight, uh, verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And my text verse is, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, you could dissect this. You could, you could, uh, I could preach on if it be possible. I could uh, preach on um, as much as lieth in you, which I, that's where I'm focusing tonight, or li and living peaceably with all men. Um, all three of those, you could kind of go in different directions, but it says, if it be possible, which implies that it might not always be possible. Anybody ever found it not to be possible to live with people? You say, this individual is impossible to live with. This individual, people do it all across our country every single year. Uh, I, I got married to this person, I gave vows, but I find it that your dispositions and my positions don't match, and vice versa, I can't live with you. I can't live with you. Um, uh, parents do it with, with I'll say kids, but uh, young and up and coming adult, uh, teenagers and adults, where we find it impossible or to work at a certain place. I can't work here. You are impossible to work with. So it says, if it be possible, which then implies that it might not always be in, or might not always be possible to live peaceably with all men. Now, the Bible says to seek peace and ensue it. Seek it, pursue it, try to find peace with people. 
uh, Houston and I, we, he went to uh, Texas with me this past week, and we had a couple of heart-to-heart situations, and we talked about certain things about, uh, about him, not really about me. I'm pretty, pretty well-rounded, pretty perfect guy by now. Uh, but, uh, but Houston, he's got all kinds of holes in his life. You know. uh, but we were talking, and, and some things that he says, yeah, Dad, I see this about me, and, and I'm trying to work on this and, and, and everything. But um, uh, we got on the case of um, being too hard and being too soft. And uh, I said, you know, Houston, tell me something about yourself that, you know, you think needs fixed. And he said, you know, sometimes I, my temper, like, because Houston's a pretty mellow guy, pretty laid back, pretty, pretty, he, he, he can talk to anybody. Houston can talk to anybody. He, he's like, I don't, it does not register in Houston's head that somebody might be of high standing or of low standing in, in, in the classes of, of, of living. He doesn't care. He'll talk to anybody. I'm like, all right, cool. But so as, as, um, as personable as he is and kind and compassionate, he also, when he gets mad, he doesn't really know what to do with his anger, and it's actually kind of funny. But he, um, he doesn't know what to do with his anger, you know, ah, and, he, and so he'll tell me, no, Dad, when my temper gets me, it gets me. Yo, kid, I've been there, been there, done that, something that I've had to deal with. So I, we were talking about biblical lessons, and um, uh, I talked about, you know, forgiving people, and he said, yeah, okay, so I'll forgive them, but they do it again. I'm not forgiving them, basically. I'm going to let them have it, you know. And I said, no, 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 it's not, not that way. I said, there's finding a medium in the Bible to where, where, be, where it's, you're hard and you're soft. God doesn't want us to be all hard, and he doesn't want us to be all soft. There's a, a, the Bible allows for a medium place in life, not a lukewarmness, but discernment. Going, when is it okay to get in a physical, when it, not when is it okay, but when is it appropriate, when is it necessary, when is it acceptable to f- get in a physical altercation and for which cause? But more often than not, Jesus teaches, turn the other cheek. Let them have the high ground. Or you take the high ground, let them have it. Let them have it. You walk away with the, with the short end of the stick because the guy who can walk away with the short end of the stick, knowing all the parameters and of everything that just happened, God says, you're mature enough to bear it where that person was not. You're not going to quit church over it. You're not going to hold a grudge over it. And, or, or at least if you do, you'll carry it around for a minute, but you know where to take it. You know to take it to me, and you know I make all things right. Now, it's not always easy to live peaceably with all men. There are, there are people in this church, sometimes I would like to have meetings with them, but I can't say the things that I think that need to be said because I feel like you're going to, because I feel like they, and, and whether it be my wife or my father, or my sister, or my brother-in-law, or doctor. Now, Ms. Doctor Miss Posse, they're perfect. They don't need anything done. Uh, they just—they are the cruise control of Three Rivers Baptist Church. You just—they're they're on autopilot for the Lord, and I, I thank God so much for them. Um, I don't have to babysit them. I don't have to. They'll, they'll call me though sometimes. And Miss Pohazi, brother Jake, this is Mrs. Pohazi. Said yes. Who put a paint roller in the door? <laughs> I, said, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, one of my kids did it. My wife did it, you know. And uh, but other than that, you know, we're, it's pretty, you know. But but sometimes I want to address people, but I have to go in. I have to retreat into my mind and go. Okay, how do I do? How do I address this person? Because I don't want them to have hurt feelings. I wish that people could just know my heart and know that I would never. I I don't. I'm not looking to hurt anybody's feelings. So if I walk up and say. Hey, this is the situation. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not trying to step on your toes or lash out on you. Or I'm just trying to say, hey, this is an issue. What can we do to fix it? If you don't know me by now to be one of the most easygoing, likable people that you know, not because I've got a winning personality, because I am looking, all I want is a solution. That's all I want. Here, what can I do to help you do your job? So please, can you do it? So I don't have to do it. What can we do? Or and then I have to come in. Why did you? 
Let me massage your shoulders for you. Let me rub your feet for you. And here's your binky. And here's your... Ah. While the work of the ministry suffers because Christians just won't grow up. The pastor is often not putting out the fires of hell because he has to run around and put out the hellish fires in his members. So Paul is saying here, if it's possible to live peaceably with all men, which implies it's not always possible, but he says, as much as lieth in you. Now the pastor is supposed to have a lot that lieth in him. The next, the next folks is supposed to be, um, we've never really had formal deacons, but um, a, a deacon type of man in the building, a, a, a teacher, the choir leader. And it goes down that you're supposed to have things that, you're supposed to have a whole lot of grace that lieth in you to live peaceably with all men. God wants us to pursue peace because scripture says it is the goodness of God that leadeth men to repentance. The goodness of God. You know, God only goes to war with unrepentant believers and heathens. God only goes to war when God can look at the heart of somebody and go, they're not going to get right unless I break their bones and shed blood. But David said, the Lord does not despise a broken spirit and a contrite heart. God's not against you being broken. He's against you being broken and then trying to act like you're not broken needed fi and needing fixed. So even God says, as much as lieth in me, I will have long suffering toward you. So, so should we have long suffering toward people. So I want to focus on that tonight, as much as lieth in you, as much as lieth in you. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Some things are not as important as others. Uh, anybody in here, you have a hobby? Anybody have a hobby? Miss Jennifer, what's your hobby? Crochet. Anybody else have hobbies? Miss Carrie? Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. Hobbies. Come on. Miss Sarah? You like to sing. Okay, uh, what about you who don't have hobbies, but you look at a hobby and go, man, I wish I could do that as a hobby. I have one. Uh, woodworking. I would love to be able to. I, 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 I know I'm old. I was going through broadcast television yesterday, and we have some weird channels, like 45-3, you know, and I what, just turned it on. I'm laying on the floor playing with um, uh, Deacon, and a guy comes on. He's got his lathe, and he's got all these tools and all this stuff, and he just he goes outside. He cuts a piece of firewood from this block of stuff that he has, and he comes inside and turns it into this, like, really nice salad bowl. I'm like... Man, I wish I could do stuff like that, build cabinets and do all kinds of, build a boat. I look at that stuff and I'm like, dude, woodworking, craftsman stuff, I'd love to be able to do that. Okay, hobbies. I like hobbies. But since I can't do that, I do the things that I can do. Sit on the couch, eat Cheetos, and watch sports, eh, man? <laughs> really, really. Um, but some things are not as important as others. Such as, um, I like to lift weights. Man, I, I like to lift weights. I like playing basketball. Um, I like, man, I like cars. We just saw a uh, candy apple red with a, just a, a, f a flake finish and the black sports stripes at the Sunoco fuel station in Ohio, or in, in New Haven. And uh, as we were driving down the road, it was a Chevelle. We, boom, we looked over, I'm like, whoop. That's like a 66, 67. That's a Chevelle, and it was, it was beautiful. I like cars. I like, listen, I like fast stuff. Okay, I like that stuff. I like sports, and I like hobbies, and I like all doing those things, but I cannot, I, I cannot, and here's, I cannot give that stuff as much energy because it doesn't deserve it. The, 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 that's leisure. See, and the devil and the, excuse me, the world has kind of, that kind of, really has converted the way of human thinking to pursue leisure as a lifestyle. When that's not what God, that's not what God made. God is all up, God's about work. God says work. Man shouldn't eat if man won't work. Man shouldn't eat if man won't work. Now, Brother Kevin is retired. That doesn't mean that he doesn't get to eat. Um, you know, you're retired. Uh, folks have uh, disabilities that keep them from working. Uh, whatever the case, it doesn't mean you don't eat. It, it means work at something. 
Get up in the morning and make your bed and wash the windows. Do something. Do Stay busy. God, we were not created. Our bodies were not created to stay idle. They're created to work. Now, um, uh, 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 these things that I like doing, they don't deserve as much uh, concentration, as much energy, as you could say soul winning or reading the Bible or, pray, or praying or, or doing the things that would please our Lord and Savior. Now, our text says, as much as lieth in you, as much as lieth in you, there are some things that deserve your best attention, your best attention. And I want to give you a couple tonight. Number one, number one, very quickly, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It says it right there in the verse. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, it's not an easy thing to do because most people, most people, including Christians, not only don't know this verse and live it as a principle of life, but they're the opposite to even try to live around. And we're not even talking about people just, your home is heaven and you come to church and find somebody you can't live peaceably with. No, it usually starts at home. It's usually the wife. It's usually the husband. It's usually the kids. It's usually the dog. You know, it's usually, man, I can't live with this. So it's not easy. It is not easy to live peaceably with all men, but we should make the effort a priority in our life to live peaceably. Somebody was telling me this afternoon about a, a certain um, uh, uh, place that they go to, and they said, man, everybody's just really soft and really meek and really, yeah. And, and uh, uh, as opposed to, um, the, you know, our crowd, the Jackson crowd, the Three Rivers crowd, it's usually loud, it's usually rowdy, it's usually full of laughter and um, aggressiveness in a good way. I don't mean, you know, we're, you know, national and people with our teeth, but I mean, we're aggressive in, are you saved? Are you baptized? Where do you go to church? What are you doing? Ride the bus, come do this, come do that, and get it going, you know, and be all about it. But some people are just more mellow. We just kind of laid back. Okay, sometimes those things clash. The really zealous and the really mellow, they, they, they clash with each other. So when that is in a marriage or in a church or in a school or on a job site or whatever the case is, you know, I, I find myself in that realm sometimes uh, at, at work where I'm around guys who have been doing it for some years, you know, crane operations on their trucks and guys who kind of know what they're doing. And, they, and we start working together in certain realms. No, you're not pushing me to do it your way. I'm going to do it my, I'm, I'm doing, I'm going my pace. If you don't like it, go around me. I'm going my pace. I'm doing what has worked for me. Because everybody, you know, you have these things, these, these buildings, these freezers and coolers and whatnot that go on the flatbed truck and every other driver's got some, some way, his way of chaining down his load. You know how I chain my, my load down? The way, the way that I have found that works for me. I haven't lost anything yet. Nothing's fell off in the mountains of Virginia's, of the Virginia's yet. I haven't lost anything on the highway yet. Um, now, Lord, keep it that way, please. Um, uh, I told you I wasn't going to knock on wood anymore. That's a bunch of garbage. But, but um, uh, uh, I, I, I do what works for me. I do what works for me. And a lot of times we get mixing up with people uh, who we butt heads with and we clash with. And what we do is we say, um, instead, of, instead of finding a solution, Finding a solution, something that meshes us together, because it says in verse um, uh, uh, 16 here, be of the same mind one toward another. Now, you could pair that with an honor preferring one another. You know what? I know that I've always had a way that, and I do. I go to the job. These guys have been on the job for a long, longer time than I have. I don't go, get out of my way. This is the way I'm doing it. I'll ask them, hey, you know, I've never chained something like this down before. How do you do it? How do you do it? Because if there is a better way to do it, I, that's the way I want to do it. If there's a more efficient way, that's the way I want to do it. Now, if we would, if every Christian, if every Christian would adopt, be of the same mind one toward, toward, an, uh, toward another and, and honor preferring one another, I think then real revival would break out. 
So it's in honor preferring one another. So I, I, I have, uh, you know, Brother Kevin and I are working together on a certain thing. And I go to Brother, and, and Brother Kevin comes to me and he says, uh, uh, okay, here we go. Let's take the bus, for instance. And Brother Kevin says, you know, what, situation on the bus, what do you think about this? And I'm like, ah, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. What do you think about this? And it's, you ever open a door for somebody and say, after you, no, after you, no, after you. And you come to a stalemate. Come on, just go. I'm a better, who's a better Christian, you know? No, it's, it's living peaceably with all men because we butt heads together all the time. So how do we try to live peaceably with all men? Uh, very quickly, abstain from fighting. You know, it takes two to fight. It makes, takes two to make a thing go right. It takes two, it takes two. Goodness gracious. It, abstain from fighting. It takes two to have a fight. It takes two people to fight. Now, realize that some people, Brother Alex, realize that some people just want to argue. There you go, soul winners. When you go out there, you need to understand and be able to, to discern quickly. This person just wants to argue with me. This person just wants to argue. It's a waste of my time. Some people just want to argue. It's in their spirit. The Bible says that we are supposed to avoid froward people. What are fro? What is the word froward? It's um, obtuse. It's rude, and it's hard to get around. Hard to get along with. Froward people. They're hard to get along with. You said, "Man, it's an it's an awful light blue today." And they look up and go, "Nah, it just looks like every other day." There is an argument about everything, anything, and everything. You say you say anything, and and not that they're just negative, but they're opinionated, and they want to fight about everything. Stay away from them. Avoid them. There are people, I have peers. Man, I would love to have, and I would say I would love to because I love my life the way it is. But bros hang out, you know, guys to pal around with. But I've had those growing up, and we all kind of went our separate ways, but folks have shown themselves over the years to be not worth hanging out with because they want to argue about everything. You're wrong about everything. They're right about everything. You know what? No, I'm not. I would rather obey the Bible and be lonely I'd rather obey the Bible and be lonely because Scripture gives a peace that passes all understanding than be encompassed with a bunch of friends and have to wear a fake smile all the time uh -huh, and, and fake laugh at all their dumb jokes all the time. I, I'm holding the grudge. I'm not taking the, 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 the communion in two months, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> avoid fighting with people. Some folks just want to argue. And some people, get this, understand that when you do stand for something, you do have, uh, 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 you, you are separated, you do have standards, that some people are looking to be victims. We live in it right now. We live in that realm right now where some people, they expect to be mistreated. They expect to be attacked. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. There was a situation some years ago on a basketball court, and there was a bunch of us representatives from our church, and um, a guy and his son were shooting hoops, but they were getting in the way of some of our players, and we didn't want anybody to get hurt. And one of the representatives from our church got in this guy's face because he was warned several times, please stop, please get up. And I got in the guy's face, and, you know, a fight almost broke out. And I said, Ben, go back. Oh, I didn't mean to call his name. I said, <laughs> I said, go back. I said, go out. And they went to that end, you know. And to Ben's credit, Ben's not usually one that relents to his younger brother. But in that case, he did, and I credited that to him. And I said, listen, here's the situation. And we talked, and he said, okay, I understand that. I, I get that. And guess what happened? They, they moved. They, they left. I don't know if it was because I was persuasive or not, but I know that, I know that I've heard a soft answer turneth away wrath. And to ensue peace, or to seek peace and ensue it, I want peace. I want peace. I would much rather everybody live in peace. I don't want war. War's expensive. People die. Parents lose their kids. People are blinded and, 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 and deaf and they're maimed for the rest of their life and living. Why? Over oil, over land, over some ideology? Over, why can't we have peace? Because we live in a world of sin. But we Christians are to be the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
Blessed are the peacemakers. God wants us to be peacemakers. How can we do these things? By avoid fighting with people. Avoid and knowing people. That's a forward person. Um, uh, and there's, I don't have any time to go all the way through this, but I'll also tell you this very quickly. Avoid foolish questions. The Bible says all they do is gender strife. Foolish questions. Where did Cain get his wife? It's not hard to deduce if you read the Bible. So, <laughs> uh, you know, we can come with a, a good joke for that. Uh, creationistsonly.com. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> farmersonly.com. Uh, but uh, you know what? Cain was a farmer. He was the first farmers only. All right, let's move on. Um, uh, <laughs> avoid foolish questions. Uh, how did all the animals get on the boat? Uh, God told them to. You know, you know, I do that, with Brother Alex, and being new to soul winning, you're going to understand people are going to ask these questions. Don't, don't try to answer it on the spot. Say, you know what, let's finish this, and then I'll answer any questions you have at the end. You know what happens by the end? They usually forget the question. They usually don't remember. If you take long enough, you'll get them to forget anything. Uh, but uh, <laughs> don't, don't, I don't want them to remember. I don't have time for that. I want to go knock on your neighbor's door, you know? Avoid foolish questions. Avoid foolish questions. And then ask forgiveness of your enemies. I told Houston the other day, and Lucas, I said, listen, when you get into arguments or you feel like somebody has mistreated you, I said, this is what you do. I said, you bring Jesus into any equation. You bring, especially if it's an attack from another Christian or, or a slight or a slander or a bullying tactic or whatever the case may be, you just bring Jesus into it. And then what, when, then what can they say? You'll find out real quick what kind of Christian they are when you bring Jesus into it and their response is either flippant or repentant. You'll find out real quick. So if somebody, if another Christian, uh, let's say, let's, say um, uh, let's just use Caden. And I don't think Caden is malicious. I don't, I don't think he is. Now, Kenzie, on the other hand. Uh, but uh, uh, let, let's use Caden. And Caden comes up to Houston, and he says, man, uh, you know, you look real fat in that shirt today. No, 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 come on, come on. Just something real rude. Or, or um, man, would you do fall out of the ugly tree and hit every stick on the way down? You know, I just, I'm not saying you are. This is an illustration. You're a handsome kid, Okay. You are. Pause. Let's give him some affirmation here. Is, is Houston handsome? Yes. Somebody said no. Your mom? Jamie, you said no? No. Oh, so let's say, let's say somebody is mean to him and calls him a bunch of names, and this is a fellow Christian. Immediately, what do we want to do? We want to be hurt, don't we? We want to be hurt. But the Christian who remembers that he is fearfully and wonderfully made, the Christian who remembers even a 10-year-old boy, God made me. God made me. So you're telling me that God made, God made me ugly? You're telling me God made me? No, no, those Twinkies made you. <laughs> uh, uh, you're telling me God made me this way? You're saying God made me ugly? You're saying God made me? All you have to do is say, you know, I don't think Jesus would say those things to me. And if somebody's response is, well, Jesus isn't here, Jesus isn't here. Or, or um, you know, Jesus wouldn't, and so if they either have a flippant response or a repentant response, you'll know what kind of Christian they are real quick when you bring Jesus into the equation. And we can, you know, we can do that with anything. When we have a, when we want to go to war in our soul against our enemies, if we bring Jesus into the equation, Jesus said we're supposed to pray for our enemies. Because what does it say we do? We heap coals of fire upon their head. Lord, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to burn them. You see, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Houston said, you know, if they did this, this is what I'm going to do. I said, no, that's the Lord's. Let God have it. Let God have the vengeance. Let God have it. We are not in the driver's seat of, of the warfare that we fight. He is. We're the soldiers, and these are the commands that this is the game plan, this is the war strategy that he's given us. I said it in Sunday school this morning. I think maybe, maybe I, I don't know, we try to rhyme, you know, the, the, the uh, theme for a year. 
You know, I, I was thinking, why, why don't we have go to war in 24? Go to war in 24. And uh, we can um, militarize, you know, our strategies for soul winning. Uh, you know, we can, there's all kinds of fun things that we can do theme wise, but go to war in 24. If we're getting closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, let's be found on the front lines, not retreating somewhere. Let's be found uh, 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 doing what we can do for the Lord. Now, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with the boneheads that live around you. Live peaceably with all men. Number two, as much as lieth in you, lean entirely on the Lord. As much as lieth in you, lean entirely on the Lord. As I get older, the more I lean on the Lord. The more I lean on the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now, what do you lean on him for? I lean on him for several things. Number one is deliverance. The Lord has delivered me. I, I don't, almost don't even want to say this online, uh, but I'll say it because I don't really care that much because um, the Lord can deliver me either way. Um, but I had a uh, Monday, this past Monday, uh, Houston and I got to Little Rock, Arkansas, and my allergies hit me like, like a train. I mean, they, my head felt, it was just pressure. I had no, no mucus or anything gross, but just sinus pressure, headache, scratchy throat. I felt terrible. So I took vitamin C and, and I took Dayquil and I took all these things during the day. And, um, you know, I wanted to make the trip somewhat enjoyable for Houston. And, um, but it was getting pretty bleak and I could see the disappointment on his face and, and I didn't want to disappoint him. So I said, all right, we're going to do what we came here to do. So I found a parking lot to park in, uh, a Walmart parking lot. And, uh, there's something called a Peter's Piper's pizza, Peter Piper's pizza. And, uh, and we went to Peter Piper's Pizza, you know, and um, uh, everything was great. And I get back to the truck, and I open the door, and it's going ding, 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 ding. That's, that's not normal. Something was left on. A light? A switch? What, what could it possibly be? <laughs> and I'm looking around going, I don't know what it is. And as I sat in the driver's seat, and I'm looking around, um, there's procedure. There's a checklist to go through just like an airplane almost. Okay, this and this and this and this. And, oh, I didn't set my air brakes. It's an air brake vehicle and there's no, there's no park. Put it in park, there's no park in a semi truck. You set the air brakes and psh, it locks the brakes with air uh, through air pressure. And um, uh-oh, the Lord delivered me. He had to have. He had to have. That, you know, without, I think, the Lord's deliverance, that truck could have went rolling back or rolling. Now, if it rolled forward, it hit a curb, I'd have been safe, you know, not really anybody, but nothing would have happened. But that truck going rolling back. Now, if I was on a little bit of a hill, I would have got out and it started rolling away. And there's so many things that you can explain away. I like to look at it and go, the Lord delivered me. I like to give God credit. Even if God's sitting up in heaven like, I didn't do that. Well, Lord, you're getting credit for it anyway. I'm giving God the credit. Um, uh, trust God to deliver you. He is able. He is able. I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He is able. How many know that? Sing it with me. He is able, he is able. I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. You know, God can carry you through. God can deliver you through. David said it. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he's going to deliver me. Now, you say, Brother Jackson, that's not what it says. I know what it says. But to get my point across, he's going to deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. Now, what has he already delivered me from? You say, man, it's been a while since I felt God's or, or, or seen God's deliverance in my life. Well, look at it already. He's already delivered you from hell. You're not going to hell because he's delivered you from it. Look back on with some of you who have been faithful Christians and saints throughout the years. Go ahead and look at your life and see some of the habits that you had. The Lord delivered you from those habits. Amen. The Lord delivered you from those things. And thank God that when I get down and I get desperate and I get hopeless, he delivers me from hopelessness. 
Man, he delivers me from these things. So I trust in God for deliverance, but I also trust in him for direction. For direction. I'm in a point in life where I, God has to direct. He must direct. But I take uh, verses from Joshua, verses from Psalm chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It says it, and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, Jeremiah 10, 23. Uh, another one, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah, where he says, um, and this is, uh, I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing here, but he says, my thoughts towards you are good thoughts to give you an expected end. I, God has a direction for us. I said it this morning to Joe and Renee outside. This verse that I've been pondering on and chewing on and going over and over again is, can two walk together lest they be agreed? Can two walk together lest they be agreed? That means basically you got to agree on stuff to walk together. But let's go a little deeper. Back in the days when Jesus said that, most people did walking everywhere they went. So not only upon what are we going to talk about while we walk, but where are we walking and what direction are we taking? Jesus says, we can't walk together. We can, we can start off our journey by realizing that you're a sinner and I am the Savior. You, do, do you understand that? We agree on that? Yes, Jesus, I understand and I agree on that. And a whole lot of people, that's where they leave Jesus. That's where they get off track with Jesus. I walk with Jesus as far as salvation goes, but as far as cleaning up my act and cleaning up my life and walking with him and getting to know him, most people don't walk with Jesus because Jesus says, this is, where, this is where I want us to go and this is how I want us to get there. The Bible explains all of that. Most people don't want to pay the price. Most people don't want to pay the toll it costs to, talk with, to walk with Jesus. And by the way, it's not, it's not really a toll to pay when you start walking with Jesus anyway. You go, you know what? I was going to pay somebody. I was going to pay the world, the flesh, and the devil, or I was going to pay Jesus. I'd rather pay Jesus. I'd rather pay the cost that the Bible requires than the cost that the world requires. You see, the world will take your age. It will take your conscience. It will take your, your, uh, uh, it'll take your purity. It'll take your testimony. It'll take your money. It'll take everything you have. It'll eat you up. It could take your spouse and your kids if it, if it wanted to and you were willing to give it up. There are people who, who'd give up, give up anything to be off of the thing that took their wife and their kids and their health and their youth and their purity and all those things. Jesus is the antidote to all that. Jesus is the antidote. But Jesus, Jesus, when we trust in him as much as lieth in you and we lean on the Lord, he'll give us deliverance. I trust him for deliverance, but I also trust him for direction. Direction during my problems. Direction on how to deal with people. Direction on, hey, how to, how to find a wife how to find a husband. You know what I want for Three Rivers? I want for Three Rivers to be bustling with uh, folks who have been married for uh, decades and newlyweds and singles. I want people to find their mate in church. I don't want them to find them in the club. You get desperate enough, you go out and find one in the world. I'd rather you find a wife in church. I'd rather you find a husband in church. That's, I, that's what I'd rather have. I'd like for, for Three Rivers to be able to, to uh, 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 go out door knocking somewhere, you know, and this family comes to church or this uh, college girl comes to church and uh, she looks at Alex and says, wow, he's, I guess he'll do. And, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and brother, you know, I would like for that. I would like for people to say, wait, where'd you, where'd you find your wife? Where'd you find your husband? Oh, we met at church. We met at church. Uh, let's see, brother Dan and Miss Sarah met at church. Uh, Miss Jackson and Brother Jackson met at church. My wife and I met at church. Arif and Carrie met at church. Um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pitt met at church. What about, now, what was the dynamic with, with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Van Zulen? At, she invited you. <laughs> All right, and you're still meeting those requirements, amen. Uh, but met at church, at church, at church, at church. Dr. and Mrs. Pauzzi, you met at Bible college? Bible college, huh? Doing church work, meeting at church, amen. That's, what it, that's, that's, that's awesome, I'm glad to hear that. But meeting at church. Now, um, uh, you trust him for directions. Meetings uh, with your mate, uh, uh, choosing a job or a career, 
You know, growing up in our house, and I want to be quick here. Growing up, it was, you know, dad would always ask, or mom or somebody would ask all the time, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? You know, Teresa was um, a teacher, I think, and uh, Ben was a preacher. I want to be a preacher. Jesse was the pink panther. I want to be the pink panther when I grow up. And that was just for a while, you know. Sarah, what, what, what was yours? A wife and a mom. <laughs> And the truth comes out. I want a man to pay for everything. Uh, it would get for me, you know, I, to be, and I can go back, I can remember, I, I think I can. I, I would throw out football player or basketball player or something like that. But really, I didn't know. I didn't know. I grew up around preachers and missionaries, seeing people saved and going to conferences. I mean, I, you talk about a church baby and a church boy and a church, I, that, me. Me, I, I'm as churched as you can get, churched. But I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know what I wanted to be. And during the preaching service here at this building, I came forward one day and I filled out one of these green cards by whoever was working up here. And they said, what are you coming for? And I said, I just want to surrender my life to God. Whatever God wants for me, that's what I want to do. And I don't know what he wants from me. I just want direction. God, point me in a direction and I'll go. You know, Abraham didn't even get that from God. Why should I? You say, Abraham didn't. Yeah, God said, Abraham, pack up your stuff, you're moving. Where, God? I don't, I don't know. He goes home and says, Sarah, we're moving. She's like, all right, where? I don't, I don't know. Well, can you tell me which, are we gonna walk out and go left, right, north? So where, where are we going? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. And it was day by day, day by day, and with each passing moment, God gives us direction. Now, thankfully, Jake Jackson has the written, completed word of God that Abraham did not have. So therefore, I, the, the, the direction for Jake Jackson is pretty, pretty much summed up in here. But where God wants me to work, what God wants me to do, so many times I resent having a CDL. But can I tell you how many times a CDL has saved my bacon? Can I tell you how many times that I ventured out and tried a certain thing and went, no, nope, okay, that ain't it, back to CDL driving. And I went out and tried something else. I went, no, I've taken breaks from driving trucks and all kinds of things like that. But a job and a career and, and um, where should I go to church and where, where should I live? What should I do? God, give me direction. God, give me direction. As much as lieth in you, trust God for everything. As much as lieth in you. Uh, uh, and then uh, number three, number three, uh, 2 Kings 2.16 says this. And he said, come with me. And see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. You say, what is that? Number three, as much as lieth in you, labor with effort. Labor with effort. We go through life a lot of times just trying to coast, just trying to get through. I have those days just like anybody else where it's like, I'm going to do the minimum here. I'm going to do the very minimum to get me through. Other than that, I do not care. Uh, out on the road, I'll, put a, I'll push the 11-hour clock every single time because I want to deliver on time, if not early. I want to be, uh, I want to get there, get the job done, not so I can just go home, but every time I put on that, that Polar King shirt and get in that Polar King truck and go work, that's, that's I'm a representative of that company. I want to do good work. I want to be a good uh, employee for that company. And I, not that I'm even trying to be noticed so I can get whatever from them, but because I've said it last week and the weeks prior, I'm laboring for him. I'm laboring for him. It's all his. It, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I don't know if Polar King knows this or not, but those aren't their, those aren't their trucks. Those are God's trucks. Because the material it took to make those trucks, they got it out of his earth they got it out of his earth. Those are his. And I am his. Therefore, I work for him. Uh, but as much as you uh, that lieth in you, labor with effort. Put as much effort in for the Lord. 2023, I do not, I have no problems if we trip over our own feet this year or if we try to plan some event and it doesn't go as great and it doesn't do all these things because this year is just like a testing ground for next year if God tarries anyway because 2024 is really uh, what we're aiming for. Not so, the Bible says don't look toward tomorrow. No, come on, we just planning and schedule and we want 
speakers to come in and preachers and different things like that. But uh, we, I want to put as much effort in for the Lord with everything that we do. Everything that we do. Because God, does God bless faith? Yes, of course he does. But you know what also he blesses? Hard work. Working is hard sometimes. <laughs> and not only is it hard to work, it's harder to work hard. Don't just work, but work hard. Don't just, you know, kind of, the Bible says, what's over thy hand find to do? Do it with thy might. Do it with thy might. Do it with thy effort. God blesses hard work in Christian service. God blesses it. So if, you run, if we run a bus route, build it. We have a choir, sing with all your heart. Uh, you have a Sunday school class, lead that class, visit that class, pray for that class with all your heart. You know, Brother Sean told me today, He's got his class A with passenger endorsement. He told me, oh, I'll drive your bus. I said, last time you told me you'd drive your bus. I said, you got in a semi-truck and you left for two years. <laughs> and I said, so don't, don't go out on a limb. I said, man, you've been in church three weeks in a row. You're feeling excited. Your boys got saved. I said, you're on a little bit of a spiritual high. I said, don't volunteer until that high is plateaued. And if that desire to still serve is there when the plateau is there, then I, I, I'll take you serious. I said, but man, I looked at him, I said, I really, I appreciate your zeal, your passion, and your want to. But the fact that he said it two years ago, and then he said it again today, shows me that that fire hasn't went out. So, serve the Lord and do it with effort, do it with passion, do it with all your heart. So the Bible says, uh, 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 not only does it teach working hard, but it also says do this, pray fervently. That means hot. Pray hot. Pray fervent. You know, it, it, takes, it takes some time for me to get hot in my prayer time. Because what does a fire need to burn hot? It needs a source to burn, doesn't it? It needs something to burn. So therefore, I throw on a whole lot of confession and a whole lot of thank you, but this is really what gets me, this is, I'll tell you right here, this is what turns the heat up. Intercessory prayer. When I pray for other people, the heat gets turned up. I don't know what it is, I don't know the teaching in that yet, but I find in my own personal prayer life, confession, that, that, that might be some sparks. You know, there might be some sparks because I think about how Jesus forgave me. But I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of heat with supplication when I'm when I'm asking for things for me. But when I'm doing intercessory prayer and I'm praying for others, somehow the heat gets turned up. Somehow the heat gets turned up. And then my confession becomes a little bit more hot. And my supplication gets a little bit more hot. And my praise and my worship gets a little bit more hot when I pray for others. That's that's a, that's a that's a important thing to do is set your side set aside yourself and pray for others and then uh, lastly pay attention to the small things pay attention to the small things because when you pay attention to the small things uh, you show God you're going to be faithful in the big things that's biblical teaching by being faithful in the little things someone said that if you will do the small things well then the big things will come together right. If you do the small things well, do the small things well, do them well, do them well, do them well, do them well, then the big things come together right because it was built on principle. That, well, if it's, it's not big, so it doesn't matter. Nope, if you do the small thing right, the big things will come together. And then when we do that, got it all lined up, got it all dialed in, we're doing the small things right, press forward. I taught some time ago about Nehemiah, about how he got prayed up and then he proceeded confidently. Press forward. Press forward. Because when we press forward, we make progress. I want people to set goals. If you haven't set goals this year, set them now. Oh, January's passed. No, who cares? Set a goal this year. Set some sort of goal. A spiritual goal. Set a goal. Set it up. Knock it down. Do better work than you did this, this year than you did last year. Do more work this year than, than you did last year, and then we can be fruitful. We can be fruitful this year. I want to be fruitful. 
I've said it. I called my stand. I've put myself on the stand and said, man, I want, I want souls. I want baptisms. I want converts this year. I want that. I don't care. I, I say, I don't care what it takes, but it could take a lot. It's going to take staying out. It's I, I, soul winning for me. Soul winning for an hour on Saturday is not going to cut it. If that's the only time during the week I've got to soul win, it's got to be three hours. It's got to be four hours. It's got to be going to nighttime. It's got to be going out for a couple hours, going out to lunch with Jamie, and then going back out again. That's what it's going to be. It's going to take sweat equity. A lot from me, but I'm going to need some from you also. And some of you have been putting it in. Uh, but the Lord's coming back. Don't. Don't go to the barracks. Don't retreat. Let's pick up the standard. Let's wave it high. Let's go to war. Let's go to war, yeah, in 24, but we're marching to the front lines in 23. Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you that we have the church that we do. <laughs> and I'm able, I'm, Lord, I'm proud. I am a pr not only a proud Christian, a proud Jackson, a proud member of a church, but Lord, I'm proud of our church. I'm not full of, a, 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 not a carnal pride, but a just a, a pride in biblical truth and principle that, uh, that uh, a lot of the faithful few had just gripped onto and said, we're not letting this, tr these truths go. We're holding on to these. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep having faith whether there's 500 here or 50 here or five here, we're going to stay true to what we know the Bible teaches and is right, and God will show himself faithful. And Heavenly Father, you have shown yourself faithful so far, and you will continue to show yourself faithful because you do not lie. You do not change. There is no varying with you. And Lord, we trust in you with all our heart. Over the years, we've at times leaned on our own understanding. But then we've, we've got off of that and in all our ways acknowledge you. And the Bible says you'll direct our paths. Heavenly Father, we, we want to have a great year this year. We felt like there's been blow after blow and back, setback after setback in so many occasions. And Lord, I'm not saying that we're due for, for anything. But Lord, we're, no matter what comes, I know we're going to stay faithful. Lord, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you for Jesus. And I want to thank you of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, I'd ask that you would guide us this week. And all that we have to do, as I said in our message, that we trust you for direction. Lord, help us to do that. There are people in this room tonight who they need direction at certain areas of their life. Lord, I'd ask that you'd give it. But help us to seek it out. Uh, Heavenly Father, help us to be peacemakers. Lord, I'd ask once again, as I close, you'd give us safety as we go out this week. Bring us all back again Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Lord, the work that we go, you know when we go out and come in, our uprising and our downsitting, keep us safe. All that's on our plate, help us to deal with it um, correctly. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.